Hello, welcome. Today we are going to do a lesson that is a mini, a mini Feldenkrais lesson working with the buttocks. And this is a, just a taste, a preview of what we'll be doing in this upcoming Strength, Stability, and Vitality workshop on Sunday. So I wanted to play a little bit with a mini lesson. And it's going to give a moment for people to land, find me here. Welcome. And if you are coming on, I'd be curious to hear where you're chiming in from. I will also say that today, David Zimok Burson, who's a Feldenkrais trainer for over 40 years, is teaching a free lesson called Movements of the Jaw and Tongue to Relieve Anxiety. And this will be on Zoom, and I can share the link with you if you don't yet have that. So let's go ahead and begin. For those of you that are here, let's go ahead and begin in standing. Okay, so take a moment to notice how you're standing today without doing anything to, to change yourself or correct yourself, just to simply stand and notice what it's like to stand. Notice where your attention goes. And begin to notice whether you feel any differences between the way that you contact the floor, the way that you're supported through your left side compared to your right side. And again, not changing, correcting, or even judging, but just being curious like, oh yeah, right now I feel more weight on this side. You can also notice how your weight is distributed on your foot, whether it's more to the inside edge or more to the outside edge of your foot, on the left side and on the right side. Just noticing any biases, any differences that you're aware of to begin with. And then go ahead and get a sense for a moment of the direction of your eyes. So whether your eyes are open or closed, and I recommend in this lesson to actually have your eyes open, just notice the direction of your eyes. Maybe you're looking at the screen right now, and if you are, then I recommend not looking at the screen. And just notice if you can detect a preference. If your eyes are a little down and to the left or up and to the right, just not correcting, judging, changing, just simply noticing. Is there a little bit of a bias? And then you can go ahead and turn to look around yourself. How easy is it for you to scan your environment right now? And what happens to your weight on your feet when you turn? Okay. And then come to lie on your back and ideally lie on a, on a mat or a blanket or a rug, something with a little bit of padding, not too, too much padding, but probably not just on a hardwood floor. And if you are not, if that's not available to you, you could do this on a bed, although I recommend a firmer surface than a bed if you can. So take a moment to sense how you're lying on the floor and in particular also the organization of your legs and feet as you're lying. And then notice your buttocks, the back of your pelvis, how this area is lying on the floor and very slowly begin to 
engage your buttocks. So you're a little bit of kind of squeezing and then letting go. And you'll repeat this several times and notice your timing of how, how slow, how fast you do it, and also how you let go of the movement. So how accessible is this to you to engage your buttocks? And then in the process of letting go, can you have it be a slow letting go? So it's not just like engage, let go, but you slowly engage and then you slowly let go. So that you can start to pay attention to, are you aware of any differences between the right side, your right buttock and your left? And you may notice a difference, you may not. You can also feel, does your pelvis tilt a little bit more one way compared to the other as you engage your buttocks and then letting go. And you can pause in between each movement, just giving yourself a moment to let go of the effort and then return again when you're ready. And do this again, engaging slowly and just notice what other parts of yourself seem to participate or wake up or light up in your awareness as you engage your buttocks and then as you let go. So you might notice something in your breathing or your abdomen or maybe something in your jaw. Just what are you aware of? And then pause for a moment and just let that go and rest. And now intentionally engage just the right side. So just your right buttock slowly contracting and then slowly releasing. And notice what happens as you do this with the right side if you're aware of any movement of your right leg. So would you say that your leg stays still or does your leg roll in or roll out as you engage your right buttock? Just noticing to begin with and we'll, we'll try some different options, but just see, is there any movement of your right leg that you're aware of? And then intentionally roll your right leg inward as you engage your right buttock. And if you're coming on right now, we're on our backs, engaging the right buttock and rolling your right leg inwards. And then you let go of the movement. One more time, connecting that contraction of your right buttock with the rolling of your right leg inward. And then the next time you do it, roll your right leg a little bit outward. It can be a small movement and go super gentle. So no discomfort, pain. If you feel that, do less. You can also imagine the movement if you have discomfort doing this. So you're engaging now your right buttock while you roll your leg a little bit out to the side, out to the right. So the outside edge of your right foot will come a little bit closer to the floor as you engage your right buttock. And then you let everything go. And then maybe one more time. Engaging slowly, coordinating, engaging your right buttock with this rotation of your right leg out to the right. And then slowly, slowly letting that go and notice what you feel, notice what you're aware of. And now let's try the same thing on the left. So first engaging the left buttock and noticing what happens to your left leg, not intentionally doing something, but what's the response. And I encourage you to have your eyes open also. If, notice if there's a response anywhere else in yourself. If your eyes are interested in looking anywhere, you just let that happen. You don't have to, but just kind of have this freedom of your head and neck and eyes in the background as you are engaging your left buttock and now roll your left leg inward. So do this a few times. 
coordinating, engaging your left buttock and rolling your left leg a little to the inside. And now roll your left leg to the outside as you engage your left buttock. And what's that like? Just small, small movement, gentle, gently. And notice when you return, what returns? What lets go when you let go? And can you let that letting go and that returning be just as interesting and have just as much of your attention as the going there? Okay, good. Pause and rest for a moment and notice what you're aware of. Now bend your left leg, stand your left foot on the floor, and now engage your buttocks and just notice which side is it easier to engage when you have your left leg bent. And then bring a little bit more attention to your right buttock and allow this engagement of your right buttock to be coordinated with rolling your right leg a little bit out to the right. So it's just what we did before, but the difference is that your left leg is bent. So you engage your right buttock, roll your right leg out to the right, and just notice what happens to your pelvis, what you do with your head and neck, jaw, tongue, breath. So looking for where to reduce your effort everywhere else to let this coordination get clearer, smoother, And then let that go, lengthen your left leg, rest. Notice what you feel. And then bend your right leg and engage your left buttock in this situation. So your right foot is standing, engage your left buttock as you turn your left leg out to the left. And just notice how this is different, how having your right leg bent changes the angle of your pelvis, changes also what you can do with the right buttock and what you can do with the weight shifting, playing with letting your head and neck be free, your eyes be free. So it can be a small movement of engaging your left buttock, letting your left leg roll out to the left. And then lengthen your leg, both legs long. Just notice what you're aware of now with your legs long. And now once engage your right buttock and then once engage your left buttock and just notice what that's like and what happens to your legs, what happens to the rest of you, your head and eyes and neck. It's going back and forth and you can do it slowly or you can pick up a little speed. Just make it a little faster if that feels good. Alternating and then let that go again. And now let's return to the first movement we began with, which is to engage both buttocks at the same time. And just notice how this feels to do now, if there's anything more clear about it or symmetrical or powerful, and also the letting go, the letting go of the work, what lets go. And now engage both buttocks while rolling both legs out to the side. Just playing with that coordination, engaging both buttocks at the same time, and you let the outside edges of your feet a little bit roll to the outside. A few times doing what feels good. Nice, and let that go. And just notice 
how your legs are lying and notice the back of your pelvis, your buttocks, scanning up through yourself, what your contact with the floor is like now. And then when you're ready, roll to your side and come sit and stand. Just take your time. And stand for a moment, simply standing and notice what it's like to stand on your feet and the distribution of the weight. Is there any difference that you're aware of there? And also just what it feels like to be upright and where are your eyes looking now? Is there any difference there? So we didn't explicitly work with the eyes or the head or the neck, just kind of had that free floating in the background. But is there any change in, in this organization, this upright organization, and also your awareness of your environment, a little, do a little turning to the right and the left. And come back to the middle and now just engage your right buttock and notice where your head and eyes go. And then engage your left buttock and notice where your head and eyes go. You can play with that a little bit. So initiating the movement from there and what happens. And then walk around a little bit. Just notice what it feels like to walk, what you are noticing now. And I recommend if you have some time to walk outside. Again, this was like a little mini taste, so not a full Feldenkrais lesson, so you won't get the full, full benefits of a long lesson, but this little mini taste of it can really wake something up, especially if you've done some lessons like this before. And if you haven't, it might be kind of like an invitation to explore to explore more. And this Sunday, I'll be teaching a three-hour workshop called Strength, Stability, and Vitality, which is a integration of Jeremy Krause's material, who's a Feldenkrais trainer in Germany. And he's developed a series of lessons working with strength and stability. So this is part two of a series of workshops I'm teaching online. And the theme this, uh, this Sunday will be integrating the buttocks. So there'll be this thread of the buttocks in the series. And there's also an intro class that I did, uh, which I will link to if you want to get a sense of more of what we're doing on Sunday. And I'd love to hear from you. How was that? What are you noticing? Feel free to write in the, in the comments as we're wrapping up our time together. And you may already know that David zemach Burson is going to teach uh, movements of the jaw and tongue to reduce anxiety in 40 minutes. And if you don't yet have the link, let me know and I can send you that. So it's a free class that will be on Zoom. So when you sign up, then I send you the the Zoom link. And if you've already signed up, you should have it now. And if you don't have it, let me know. And this class, this 1 p.m. class today is a intro to David's upcoming six-week series called Creating Neurological Balance and Ease. And what he's going to do in that series is teach a lesson on the floor, helping support this parasympathetic awakening, reducing effort, connecting to these primordial patterns that are super healthy, super good for like balance and nervous system balance. And then he's going to do a mini lesson at the end that's more for integrating and being upright. So I'm really excited about this balance of the nervous system that he is going to bring. Okay, here we go. Um, grounded, full foot connection to the ground, more balanced. Lovely. Yay. And someone needs the link. Will you tell me the link to um, <clears throat> to which thing, to the Strength, Stability, and Vitality Workshop, to David's series or David's free class. And I will grab whatever it is that you need and share it. So here's the free class, if that's what you're thinking about. And then if that's not what you're wanting, let me know. 
and happy to hear from anyone else what you're noticing and or any questions that you have. Looks like it looks like I wasn't able to post directly into. Oh, here it is. Okay. Do it like this. Okay. David's series and free class. Okay. Oh, it's hard for me to like post things right now on Facebook while I'm on Facebook. And now I'm all desynced. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is David's free class. And this is David's series. And the early bird deadline is tomorrow. And I'm just going to get off of Facebook because it's desyncing me. Okay. And there was a comment. My eye gaze was higher after. Really interesting. That happened to me too. I was more on my left side. My gaze was a little down and to the left, I think. And then afterwards, I was more balanced on my feet and I was more forward, looking forward with my eyes. And surprised how my balance while standing was definitely much better than I anticipated. Cool. Yeah, I know these little mini lessons, they seem like, how could that possibly work? How could that possibly do anything? It's not the full experience, but it does. A little something does, it does make a difference. Cool. Well, um, I'll see you at 1 p.m. And oh, yeah, one other thing is, so Movement and Creativity Library is where I have over 200 Feldenkrais lessons and creative resources with over 20 teachers. And I normally open Movement and Creativity Library up for visitors and new members at the end of the month. But because David's series starts tomorrow and there's a, a big discount for library members, I've opened up the library for new members today and tomorrow if anyone wants to join the library and get that discount. Also, David's series is going to go up into Movement and Creativity Library. So if you want to catch it that way, you can also join the library there. And then the discount for library members is for if you would like to come live and receive all the recordings and the bonus recordings and the Q&A with David. And then there's lots of options. If you aren't a library member, you can still sign up tomorrow for $100 off. And the library... The series comes with two and a half months of Movement and Creativity Library. So there's the library either way. Um, there's David's series either way. And yay, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And I'll see you hopefully at one. And we'll do this again next week. I'm going to keep on this rhythm of the weekly mini lessons at the same time weekly. And then this Thursday, we have a guest contributor uh, workshop, a uh, class, mini class, um, Paul Lu Wee, who is a Feldenkrais practitioner in Germany, and he's going to teach a lesson at 1 p.m. Eastern time in the Move Create Practice Facebook group and also on YouTube on the Movement and Creativity channel. My pelvis was off kilter before this mini lesson, and my left side wasn't engaging as much as, much as my right. Now everything is more balanced and even. Awesome. Yay. So glad to hear. Okay. So to be continued, see you next time. Enjoy. Go for a walk if you can.